Well, that was upsetting. Hey peeps, I am Moobit. Welcome back to the channel. And it is Wednesday afternoon and I've just got out of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, turns out the UK had it a day before anyone else. Yay! Makes a change. This is going to be an immediate response to the film, I suppose. I'll keep it spoiler free for the first half and then we'll go into spoilers afterwards. Immediate non-spoiler re reaction. Um, I think it's the best of the three. Um, I mean, a couple of rewatches might change my mind. I don't know, but um, James Gunn has done a blinder. The sets are fantastic. Um, it was good to see the set from the Christmas special that was on Disney Plus, if you saw that uh, over Christmas. Basically, it starts with that same set, the nowhere inside the head set. Lots of physical, practical sets, which is nice because at least as filmmakers, we're starting to get a bit fatigued with the whole virtual production thing. I know it's cheaper and it's better for COVID and everything, but it was nice to see physical, practical stuff like an old Star Wars, you know, and you, you can tell James Gunn's got that inside him, you know. Acting toward a force, but not from the humanoid characters. That's all I can really say. Um, but in unrelated news, my family have now decided they're vegan. <laughs> Take from that what you will. Non-spoilers. <laughs> The film deals with, you know, family dynamics and finding your place within a, 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 your found family, as it were. And it handles that really well. Got um, some really good stuff to do for Drax and for Mantis. And of course, Nebula gets quite a lot to do. She tends to take, take on the sort of older brother role, if you will, you know. If anything, I found Nebula not as endearing as the first two films and the, you know, Endgame and all that. Probably could have done with more of her and her sister together, but hey. Maybe that's on the cutting room floor, who knows. Sadly, it does suffer from the same problem that all the Guardians films have in that it's a bit of a cookie cutter villain. If anything, the villain wise, it's a bit of a cluster F. Um, it's no secret that Adam Warlock's in it. He's in the trailers. If you're going in as a comics fanboy, don't expect him to be like in the comics. He's not, at least from the comics I've read, but he's still an interesting character. Um, without, I can't say anything else without spoiling it. The main villain, the high evolutionary, very good acting again, but overall suffered from a bit of that. Um, while you understood his motivations, he wanted to create a perfect society, um, he kind of just becomes a bit moustache twirling towards the end, you know? Um, but his suit's amazing, incredible makeup on his face, you'll know when you see it. And um, yeah, while he was slightly more complex than, Guardi than the villain in Guardians 1, he was more there to serve you know, as the plot, because um, the plot is mostly about Rocket and, and his past. So he's, he's mainly there to sort of cause Rocket to have flashbacks and things, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know how much more details I'm going to with that, but, you know, there's positives and negatives to it. What is great is, as always, is James Gunn's use of music throughout. This is how you do copyrighted popular music you know this is how you integrate it into the film it's part of the dna of the guardians and the music's directly talking about the emotions of the characters in each scene just like the first two films unlike just being chucked in there randomly because it's like oh i know that song that's great i'm looking at you super mario but yeah love it effects amazing overall um this is the best marvel film since endgame without a shadow of doubt and it deserves to be seen in the biggest cinema possible and of course the best cinema for that is our sponsor arc cinemas um links in the description below but let's go on to the spoilers shall we five minutes later oh my god i've got no more tears left i'm crying dust Ugh. yeah um uh, joking aside um you will cry a lot in this film. Be prepared for that. Bring tissues. Um, my entire screening was just full of people, bawling, men, women, children, everything. Uh, it was, but it was not just sadness. It was tears of sadness, tears of sorrow, tears of joy and happiness. It just, it, James Gunn on the right is just piled the emotional stuff on top like that and put some whipped cream and blah, blah. It, it, yeah it's one of those it's genuinely a tearjerker oh god i'm well enough thinking about it now wow um there are 
scenes of fatherhood in there. I'm a, I'm a dad, you know. There are scenes of loss. There are scenes of just pure giddiness and joy, like an emotional release after a really, really sad moment. It just, oh, wow. <laughs> just, and that was the... And it wasn't just my screening. I mean, we were waiting. We I didn't get to go in the first screening because um, my wife is accompanying us, and uh, she's on call. So she had. But she turns out she had like running just as it started. It was like perfect timing. But uh, yeah, the people coming out of the screen while we were queuing to get in the door to go into the screen. Well, you know, just well they had to clean it. And they're all coming out. Tears, men, women. There was tears. It was, yeah. Be prepared for that. Um, obviously, as someone who's quite emotionally compromised anyway with my severe mental health disorders, speaking as that, it, you know, it, it, it wasn't difficult for me, you know, if that makes any sense. It, it didn't trigger me, you know, mental health wise. Well, it did, but it, it, it was nice. It was nice emotions or, you know, sad emotions, but nice, sad emotions. Does that make any sense? Do you know what I mean? It didn't like, it's not going to, completely send me do lally for, for for four days afterwards and i need to lie in a dark room for you know for a week or whatever um i'm i'm here i mean i'm in the super shed talking to you guys so take from that what you will but yes uh, the film starts with a scene in nowhere which is the same set as uh, the christmas special that, that was broadcast on disney plus um you know just showing like the guards just getting on day-to-day -day business putting signs up stuff like that it's a wonderful scene with rocket where it starts the whole film's basically about rocket it's it, the camera's on rocket constantly all the time in fact star lord barely gets anything to do you know except you know i'm going to see my best friend and driving the ship you know um it, it's all rocket so if you're a rocket fan you're gonna love this and the opening scene's incredible so they, they've got I don't know if it's a, if they've got an original recording just for this film or if it's a recording from the 90s that that's quite rare and, the, and they've got all of it. But they use the they open with Radiohead's Creep and he's got this, you know, Rocket's nicked the Zoom and he's playing and Rocket is just depressed AF. And he's just slowly walking through nowhere looking and everyone else around him is getting on with their lives or, you know, they're shopping, they're laughing and playing a you know um Groot and Mantis are putting a Guardians of the Galaxy office sign up that kind of a thing and he's just sadly you know in his own head and it's just for me as someone who's got severe depression and, and severe PTSD that's what it feels like walking through an average high street like I'm just not present like I'm walking like a zombie through it and not even all the stuff's going on around me and I'm just you know so that that hit hard to be honest that bit um we find out that uh star lord is just an emotional wreck he's an alcoholic now because of uh gamora not not remembering him so he's got to deal with that and it's all very sad and slow and solemn and the colors are less saturated and all of a sudden adam warlock just comes out of nowhere <laughs> through the wall comic book fighting shoes and um Rocket gets severely mortally wounded and then that kicks the film off. Uh, you know, the titles roll and, and then we, we go into hyper gear and it pretty much never slows down for the entire film. So the whole film, you know, Rocket's in an incubator on the ship and they're trying to race to various places in the galaxy to, to basically cure him, you know. He's, he's got the MacGuffin, if you will, is Rocket, you know. So his... The MacGuffin with Rocket the, in this one is he's got so, so severely damaged, but the cybernetics are inside him, the proprietary technology, and they're triggered to um, send a signal out if he gets severely damaged. And that's where the high evolutionary comes in, you know, because he's trying to find Rocket because he, 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 he's a unique specimen that he's made, you know. But they try to do like a space defibrillator, if you will, and there's a kill switch inside Rocket that goes off and makes him worse and like burns him to death. And you know, it's basically let's try and you know burn the evidence, if you will. They manage to stop it, but then the whole film's about Rocket is on the brink of death the whole film, and they're trying to you know they're going to various places like the office of the medical tech company of the you know because some of the some of the tech inside is cybernetics because it's first burned away you can read it and they go there and they go somewhere else and you know you 
you get the general idea. It's a Race Against Time film and it's interjected by going inside Rocket's head and he's in a coma and he's having flashbacks of all his memories up to now, you know, and um, it's really well done and it's a really beautiful story and it makes you cry because honestly the effects are amazing it, it goes to his past when he's a baby right from him being born to the inquisitor cup reaching and you probably saw that on the trailer he's doing that and grabs him and the short version is he ends up in a cage with three other animals that have been experimented on one's a cybernetic bunny that's got spider legs which is just freaky but amazing uh one's a walrus where he's, the bottom half of him has been chopped off and replaced by a like an electronic wheelchair. Um, and one is Lila, who comic book fans will know as Rocket's girlfriend. Um, and, you know, she's I think she's an otter, isn't she? So she's an otter, but she's got cybernetic robot arms, you know? So it's very Toy Story 1, you know, when they go to the evil kid's... Uh, is it Sid? They go to the evil kid's bedroom and he's like, Frankenstein monstered all these Barbie dolls and Technic and, uh, you know, Meccano pieces and everyone's... And it's, they look scary, but they're actually really friendly. It's one of those kind of stories, you know? And it's really good. The, the effects are amazing. They make you really care about those characters. And I really look forward to when we get another flashback where it's does that story on a bit further um of course that the end of that story is tragic i know this is a spoiler section but i'm not going to spoil it for you here that is the point where everyone in the theater is bawling their eyes out audibly um <laughs> yeah and um to really tell you exactly what happens kind of spoils it because you know it's coming even though you know it's coming it's fine but it's the fact that you've gone on this emotional journey with these animals that you've you know, you put humanoid traits into them, you know, and it's it's beautiful. I love it. And then Act 2 is basically set aboard a organic space station, which is just gross. And then Act 3 is the high evolutionaries um, ship come lab come Earth replacement planet that is experimenting on. You'll see when you get there. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a free act structure. The, the second act is a very outdated Among Us reference. Um, I'm not sure what they were thinking there, but yeah, they basically wear Among Us shirts and it play, even plays the tune in the background. On they got some normal music and they, they go, do, 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 you know, that bit um, in the background. So it's like, if this film came out two or three years ago, yeah, fair enough. But now, like, what? I don't think anyone plays Among Us anymore, you know? Again, all practical sets with CGI backgrounds to enhance or extend them, very good. Um, the props and costume departments have done a blinder, like even the, the security guards wear like organic fleshy armor suits. The cameras are eyeballs and like the computer interfaces are like these balls full of goo that you put your hand in and it's just gross, you know, that is, you know, like nostril hair kind of bits sticking out of the corridors. And it's just, yeah, it's going down that sort of body horror, but in a Marvel kid-friendly way, if that makes any sense. So if you're into your Hellraiser and that kind of stuff, your Clive Barkers, your, you know, your alien xenomorph kind of thing, you probably get a kick from Act 2. It's just um, lots of squelchy noises and, you know, you get the idea. And... Um, but there's an in-universe reason for it being organic and it's explained in the film and it's it's quite clever actually and that was a really good scene although it, there was a lot of gross bits in it if you know what i mean and then act three we go we find counter earth which comic book fans will know um which is basically an earth clone that uh, the high evolution was made to put his experiments on um and he's just let it evolve, you know, just like Earth has. And then it's it's obviously a parody, a direct reflection on our own Earth. So the high, high evolution is there and he's quote unquote ivory tower looking down on them all. And he's, he's got, he's parked his ship in the Bay of New York, you know, and he's looking down on what, you know, a perfect re re recreation of New York and the, and the state around it. And he thinks it's all amazing and wonderful and there's panda people and rabbit people and, you know, everyone ev everyone down there, they're all perfect. I made them to be perfect and so therefore they're going to live perfect lives and he's just, you know, he's there like, yeah, I'm great. Until Star-Lord and the crew arrive and they um, basically get, they, through 
shenanigans end up borrowing someone's car and it's like a 1970s estate car which is pretty cool um and they're driving through and you're seeing things like um squids dealing drugs to to dog puppy kids in an alleyway and and two panda people i think they were having a knife fight you know like homeless rabbits sleeping on the benches and things like that and you know, it's up to uh, Groot and Star Lord to go to the evolution and go. Are you fucking kidding yourself, mate? Look at them. You know, that leads to one of the most epic scenes ever involving Groot. And if you've seen the third trailer, you've seen a glimpse of it. Skip for twenty seconds if you don't want to know. But they they're not allowed. The, the high evolutionary knows they're coming, and he and he, he gets these goons to take all the weapons off them. You know, and they walk in and groups in there. And then he, he, he goes, Groot, kill them all. And then he's just, it grows like 15 arms. And they've all got guns on them. <laughs> Rocket Lord, all, you know, like grenades, all that kind of stuff. All grow, going out. And like Star Lord's like back to back with Groot with all these arms surrounding him. Like, really cool scene. Um, the High Evolutionary finally accepts that um, his experiment is a failure. Presses a button in his pyramid ivory tower thing is actually his spaceship kill surprise and it takes off and it just bombards and blows everything up below you know and which makes you boo it's supposed to make you boo his boo hate him even more and then yeah it goes into you know your your standard marvel climactic space battle shooty shooty pew 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 kind of a thing like my wife watches it for the characters she didn't like that bit i thought it was amazing there was there's a wanna in it of course there's a wanna in it a uh, big fight scene with all the Guardians, and it's a corridor fight scene. Yeah, Marvel, known for corridor fight scenes. But it's epic, and the camera's swooping between people's legs, and they're spinning around them. And, you know, it's clearly not shot shot as a one -er practically. You know, it's, you know, they've linked up different shots, but it's it looks like a one -er, And it's a good four or five minutes long. It was very impressive. Well done. Well done to everyone who made that. And then there's another sad bit, which I'm, you know, I'm not going to spoil that bit. There's a sad bit at the end before they get away. Um, very sad bit. Yes, what I will say is smaller kids, you might, parents, you might not want to bring them because as well as act two with the gross kind of body horror, you know, living organism spaceship thing that they're on, Spoiler alert, but Rocket rips the high evolutionary's face off, revealing like so his eyeballs hanging out and his and his skull nose is there and his teeth are like and all his lips all half ripped off and hanging off. And it's shown at first you go, uh, it's like the camera spins around, you know, to the back to high evolution's back, and the rocket's like crummy, and, you know, and they're like, okay, they're gonna cut away, and then they cut to it, and is and it's full on like how they got away with that with a 12 certificate i don't know it is very gruesome uh, so just be warned um i i was in there with a, a 14 and a 15 year old and they were fine but you know younger kids like six year old or whatever they might not like that bit and the the body horror spaceshipy bit in the middle um so just be aware of that overall yeah i think it's the best individual guardians movie full stop is it the best characters act it is for rocket certainly and it is for um, drax and drax gets a very good send-off something very emotionally tied to him and we don't need to see drax anymore though we still can but he gets a wonderful signature at the end if you will rocket clearly has learned to accept himself and he finally calls himself rocket raccoon you know, after the whole film and all the other films saying I'm not a damn raccoon, he, he finally takes that as his second name um, in honour of his, his old friends for, that we saw all the way through the film in flashbacks. I will say one character who does um, survive is Mantis and she goes off to sort of find herself, which I think they're setting up a Mantis TV show on Disney Plus and I'd watch the hell out of that, frankly, because I think she's wonderful. So... Yeah, either she's going to get a TV series or she's going to appear in the Disney Plus series or maybe she's in the Marvels or something. Um, so watch this space for that. But yeah, is it the best character arc for the rest of them? I think Star-Lord had a better character arc in, um, in, the, in the two Endgame films. 
and as for the sisters, uh, so Gamora had more to do in, you know, Guardians number one and of course Endgame. Uh, Nebula had more to do in Guardians 2 and Infinity War, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, it, but it's still, as, a, as an ensemble, is it's definitely amazing. It's a great film, great effects, very emotional. It's the most emotional Marvel film that Marvel have ever released. Very well written and highly, highly recommend that you go and watch it in the cinema so you can be part of that experience with, you know, a hundred others, you know, um, it's definitely worth it, this one. But until next time, I've been Moobit. You've been Awesome Source. Check out Arc Cinemas via the link in the description below and say that Team Reflector sent you. I'm, I'm now off to put an IV saline drip inside me and drink about 15 litres of water to replace all the bodily fluids I've lost. Ta-ra. <laughs> And there's a cat on my roof. <laughs> At least I will if I can talk. Ah. Oh. Outtakes. Um, the problem when you've got severe anxiety and severe PTSD is you tend to bite your cheek, the inside of your cheeks when you sleep. So I must have bitten really hard last night and it hurts. <laughs> ah. Hooray, it's the end of that video, so it's time to tempt you with more videos. Please help me, I'm mental and poor, and I need the AdSense. I like to move it, move it, fit, fit, fit.